Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Good to be in church this morning. Amen. Had a, had a great week. Had a good Christmas. Got to see family and spend some time with people. Really enjoyed that. And uh, Amen. Glad to be in church this morning. Amen. Thankful for this. Amen. 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 If I could have everybody stand one more time, I'm just going to jump right into the message here. Turn to the book of Romans, chapter 7. Romans chapter 7, verse 18 through 25. Amen. For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would I do not, but the evil which I would not that I do. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man, but I see another law in my members warring 
against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. Amen. Let's all bow our heads and and say a prayer over this message this morning. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you this morning. Thank you for letting us be here this morning, Lord. We thank you for the songs that were sung, the testimonies that were spoken, God. But Lord, I pray that you help me bring this message forth where you want it brought forth this morning, God. Have your way, God. Open up our eyes, open our ears this morning, God. Help us to receive this, God. Have your way this morning, God. Help me be a servant, God. In the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Everybody said amen. 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 This is a, I read this scripture, I don't know how many times as I was studying this because that's kind of a confusing scripture <laughs> when, you, when you read that. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. He's talking about the, the flesh against the spirit, how, how we, we're constantly bumping heads and, and constantly pulling us one way or the other. You know, not to do this, but yeah, it's okay to do that. You know, constantly pulling us and tugging us back and forth. Um. But how to perform that which is good. I like that one part. He says, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me. To do good with me. But how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Amen. You know what I... As, as you read this, you always, and I've used an example before, you know, you've seen them cartoons with the little angel on this shoulder and the devil's on the other shoulder, and they're constantly, hey, it's not so bad to do that, you know, no, you don't want to do that, you know, and it's constant, constantly back and forth, and that's kind of the way he's saying here is, you know, he, uh, Paul is the one that wrote that I wake up every day and die, I, I kill myself every day, I battle myself every day, that's what Paul's talking about again here is, you know, I'm, I'm, I wake up every day and I, sometimes I win the battle, sometimes I lose the battle, he's saying. It's okay to lose the battle. It's okay to lose a fight every now and then, but man, get back up and stand your ground and fight. Because this is not going to end tomorrow. It's not going to stop. Tomorrow the devil's still coming at you again tomorrow. It doesn't matter how good of a day you had yesterday, prepare yourself tomorrow because he's coming with some more power tomorrow to try to defeat you and knock you back down where he thinks you should be at. Amen. Amen. Brother Jimmy said to go ahead and amen me every once in a while. So I'm going to go ahead and support him on that. Uh, Amen me every once in a while here. Amen. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present. Amen. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man, after my spirit. But I see another law in my members, the flesh. Warring against the law of my mind, bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with my mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Amen. We're all in a constant spiritual warfare. Constant spiritual warfare between spirit and flesh. A constant, never-ending battle. Constant, I looked it up. Occurring continuously over a period of time. Remaining the same over a period of time. Unchangingly faithful and dependable. Unchangingly faithful. He's going to show up at your doorstep again tomorrow. You can depend on it. Very dependable. If you're, if you're uh, uh, starting to walk with Christ and you decided that I'm going to walk the line, I'm gonna, I've made up my mind, it is very dependable that the devil is going to show up on your doorstep again tomorrow morning and he's going to challenge you for the life that you're walking with Christ, the way you're talking with Christ, the way you present yourself with your friends, the way you present yourself with the families, the things that you laugh at, the things that you think are funny, the things that you're going to support, the things that you're going to back up, 
He's going to be there on every single one of them tomorrow. Every one. This spiritual warfare that we are in is an occurring continuously over a period of time. It is remaining the same over a period of time. And it is unchangingly faithful and dependable that you are going to fight the fight the rest of your days of your life. The flesh is constantly fighting for more worldliness, more sin, more, I'm sorry, less holiness, less godliness, less obedience to the word. The flesh is constantly battling you for that. I want to do more. I want to do more. There's no sense in walking this fine line. Why, why do this? God is such a good God. You can broaden it. No, you can't. No, you can't. The spiritual warfare we, we are in is the Holy Ghost is constantly fighting for your convictions and your holiness, your godliness, your church standards, and the obedience to God's Word. Your Holy Ghost is constantly fighting the flesh for this. Constantly. This is a daily routine over and over and over again. Sometimes we, we win the fight, sometimes we lose the fight. Sometimes we just give in and say, man, I'm tired of fighting this, okay. We do, we're human, amen. You know, I remember a story years ago when, when I first started coming here, Tony Howard gave it, and he talked about this, the, the spiritual warfare, and he, he gave this example of a, uh, an Indian chief who had called his tribe together. And he called out, his whole tribe was there, and all the little, little Indian kids were in front of, of the elders. And they're all sitting there around the, the fire, and this elder began to speak that we all have two wolves in us. One is a great wolf, and he's strong, and he's powerful, and, and he wants you to do good, and, and he, he wants you to, to treat people right, and do right, and make the right decisions. But there's an evil wolf inside of you. And he wants you to be mean to people and, and hate people and do bad things to people and talk wrong and walk wrong. And, and he said they're constantly fighting each other inside of you. And he left it at that. And this one little Indian boy raised his hand. And he said, well, which, which wolf wins? And he said, that's good. He said, whichever one you feed the most is going to win. Whichever one you... And I've, I've always remembered that little story. Whichever one we feed the most the spirit or the flesh, that's the one that's going to have control over us. That's the one that's going to win. That's the one that's going to, the, that's going to have the victory. This is a daily routine that we fight against the same battle. Most of us fight the, the same thing every day, no matter what it is. If it's alcohol, somebody's going to test you with alcohol tomorrow. If it's, you know, no matter what your temptation is, lust, uh, another woman, another man, Whatever, whatever you're in, the devil knows your weakness because you've shown it to him at one time or another. He knows what your weakness is. He knows what to set out his bait to, to get you to grab that hook and pull you in. He knows exactly what he's doing. He's been doing this a very long time. He's been after you ever since you went down in the water. Ever since you received the Holy Ghost, he's been on your back. And he's a heavy burden to carry around. Amen. Ooh, getting excited up here. Amen. We need to keep quit. We need to quit treating him like he's a family pet. Amen. He's not a family pet. And you know, and, and as long as you, you know, he's sitting beside you and you're, you're petting him and you're rubbing on him and you're like, hey, as long as you don't bite me, you don't get too rough with me, you can stay around. No. <laughs> no. Get rid of him. Rebuke him. Stay as, keep him as far off your doorstep as you can. There's no sense in having your enemy living in the same household as you. Amen. He's your enemy. The Satan is your enemy. He does not care about you. He hates you with a passion that you have never seen or felt before. He cannot stand you. He wants to... I have preached that message before, but he, he wants to like... Try open the window a little bit. And if you let that window come open a little bit, he's going to open that thing up. He's going to break the glass. 
He's going to destroy that windowsill, everything he can to get inside to you and inside of your kingdom that you're trying to build for God. He's going to get inside of there. He's going to tear everything up that you try to build for these last few years or several years. He's going to try to tear everything up and ruin everything inside of there. Now, I'm talking about your family. I'm talking about your friends. I'm talking about your bank account. I'm talking about the, your house, the thing you drive, whatever you hold as precious to you. God, family, and friends, he's going to try to destroy it. He will. He will give him. You've heard that old saying, you give him an inch, he'll take a mile. That's, that's who they're talking about, is this enemy of ours. Amen. He will, he will bring other people into your life to keep you distracted from church. Amen. Nobody in church cares about me. Nobody in church really, I don't have nobody to hang out with. I don't really, you know, this, that, and other. He'll bring other people into your life and keep you distracted. And he, he did that to me and my wife for years. He did. He did. And, and we stayed away for a long time. Amen. He'll bring people into your lives, keep you distracted, keep you busy while he tears your kingdom down. Amen. I'm going to turn to the book of Matthew. This is very, very familiar. The Beatitudes. I want to read these. I want to read these. Matthew, the fifth chapter, let's start in the third verse. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for their kingdom, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for the righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets which were before you. Amen. These beatitudes, blessed are they, blessed are they, blessed are they, is exactly what we need to be. Humbled, meek, um, loving, kind, merciful, that's us. That, that's, that's, that, this is written for us. I mean, however many years, 2,000 years ago when this was written, this was written for us. These are what God wants us to walk around with. Good attitudes, merciful, humble, kind, loving, showing his kindness and his love. Not, not showing Mike Andrews to everybody, showing Jesus Christ to everybody. That's what he wants us to walk around and show to people is his kind of love, his kind of mercy, his kind of grace, his kind of love. Amen. All of these beatitudes can be used on a daily basis for us. We can, we can show these to, to people we pass at Walmart by just a simple smile through your mask, just pull it down and... Not, you know, you can't stay within six feet of them. But be kind to them. Say hi, wave, whatever you, you need to do today. Show them a little bit of kindness. It, it, it goes a long way. It does. It really does. Um, the, the one scripture that I'm going to talk about this morning is, the, is uh, verse 6. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. That's the one that I'm going to talk about this morning. Amen. How many people have ever been so hungry for food that it felt like you were starving to death? Anybody? I have. I have too. I have. And um, it's not a good feeling. And I mean, we, we, we never went to bed. I'm, I'm going to tell you this. We never went to bed hungry when I was growing up with mom. She always fed us, and we always went to, went to bed full. Um, I remember where we had um, pork chops or, or pork chop, and she would cut it into pieces, and us kids would eat the meat, and she'd eat vegetables, and she would not eat the meat. I remember that. But 
Where I went hungry was in the Marine Corps, out on training and survival training and stuff like that. And the only thing they'd give us was a knife, and we'd be out there for nine days. And man, can you get hungry in nine days? And you'll, you'll do whatever you can. I'm, 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 and I'm telling you, I did. You'll eat things that you never thought you'd eat. You, you'll do whatever you can to, to, to survive if you're hungry. Um, it, it's, a, it's a fact. And, um, you know, there's, there's kind of all kinds of stories on people who have, you know, survived in extreme situations and um, that they're out there. Things have happened. I mean, people do whatever they can to try to survive. It's just a, it's a human nature. Something clicks inside of you and says, man, I got to survive. Amen. If you're desperate enough and you have gone without food long enough, you'll do whatever it takes to, to fill your belly or just get some nourishment in you. Amen. You'd start by looking at your children or your spouse. And, and when, when your little child tells you they're hungry, something makes the hair on your back stand up, on the back of your neck stand up, and you just want to, you'll do something. And, and you know, some people have gone to extremes of hurting somebody else or, or stealing to get food for their family, okay? And I've also seen the, the people that will humble themselves, whew, humble themselves, swallow their humility, and make a sign. And go out and stand on a street corner and say, I need help. Holding the sign, I need help. My family is hungry. I will work for food. Amen. Could you imagine the humility that it would take, the humbleness to stand on a street corner and hold a sign as everybody, everybody passed you, friends, family, whoever, people of your neighbors would that isn't that? That's a thought. That's a thought. Amen. I want you to follow me with my train of thought today, okay? I'm going somewhere, somewhere with this. Work with me here. Spiritually, we all have needs. We all have problems. We all have attitudes. We all have things going on in our lives that each other don't even know about, okay? Spiritually, we all do. The same battles, we, we, we fight the same battles day after day after day, and they, they get heavy on us. Through our personalities and our attitudes, I'm just going to we're, we're carrying signs. Everybody has a sign they're holding. Okay, I'm going to put it like that. We all have signs. Now, some signs are loving and caring, still, no matter what you're going through. Some people still have that, that personality that they can still be loving and kind to people. And, and hold a sign that says, I'm loving and I'm kind. Okay? Some signs are scary and, and very upsetting, and rude and obnoxious. Some signs are rebellious, no matter what you're going through. And some are just plain nothing but attitudes. Okay? Some signs will say, I'll, I'll work for myself and myself alone. That's it. I'm not working for nobody else. Some signs will say, I'm working for myself and my family. And some say, well, I'll work for myself and whatever I can get as long as it's on my agenda. Okay? As long as it benefits them and they are 100% for it. But if they aren't getting anything out of it, then they back off and they will not help you. If they don't feel like they're getting anything out of it, they don't want nothing to do with it, they're not going to help you. Okay? Amen. There is a mixture of signs, and these are just things that I wrote down. This was on my mind today. I will work for attention. I will work for recognition. What's in it for me will be a sign. I will work when I'm noticed. I will work when I'm good and ready, okay? I'm too tired to lift my hands this morning. I'm bored. I'm tired. I'm hiding something. I'm untouchable, preacher. You can't touch me. Cannot be reached. 
Don't get too close to me. I don't need anything from you. I'm fine. I'm fine. Everything is okay with me. Don't step on my toes this morning, preacher. I don't need any help. I've got everything figured out. You can't teach me anything. Okay? That's one side of it. Now, the other side, we have people holding signs that says, I'm spiritually hungry. I want to be used. I'm hurting inside. I'm here looking for help. I think I'm too young. I'm a sinner. I am not worthy. That life is too hard to live. I don't understand everything. I'm praying for a revival. I need some joy in my life. I've tried everything else. I've come to praise the Lord. I need my cup refilled. I'm looking for a church to attend. I need help. Preach to me. I am spiritually starving. I need to get baptized. I need the Holy Ghost. Okay? So you can, you can feel the tension between these two different types of signs, okay? Some are, are here to enjoy the house of God, and I'm here to get touched. I'm here to raise my hands. I'm here to worship God, and then don't bother me today. I'm not here for anything. You can't touch me. I know everything, okay? There's tension. Spiritually, there's a warfare going on inside the church house, okay? And I'm telling you, I'm, how many of you has been in a church and you felt the tension in the church? Anybody? Amen. You feel that tension, the good. I'm, going, I'm, I'm here to do good. I'm here to worship God. But when I go to do good, there's evil present. No matter what you're doing in life, if you're at, at your job site, if you're driving down the street, somebody will pull out in front of you. Oh, they're evil. Right? I'm, going, I'm just going to the grocery store, and all of a sudden, oh, okay, it's on. Somebody pulled out in front of me. I'm mad. No matter what you're doing, there's good and evil going on. Oh, yeah. Amen. The guy didn't mean to do evil by pulling out in front of you. It could be an elderly lady that can't see that far anymore, or a young driver that don't know the distances yet, but yet all of a sudden, we're upset and we're mad at them. Amen. No matter what we're doing, there's a constant battle. Constant spiritual warfare. In the church, out of the church, doesn't matter where you're at, there's a constant, unforgiving, faithful, undoubtedly, you're going to have a battle every day. Amen. But the ones that are here with the sign that says, I'm spiritually hungry. I want to be used. I'm hurting. I'm looking for help. I'm looking for a church to attend. Amen. Amen. There's a spiritual warfare going on in every service. When I go to do good, evil is present there. Every service, every service, there's a spiritual warfare going on. We're not the only ones with a sign, okay? There are signs up here if we see them. There are signs up here. God puts signs up here. God puts signs up here. Looking for worshipers. Wanted. So prayer warriors. Need peace? It's at the altar. I love you. I care for you. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Broken lives are fixed here. My, fit, my benefits are eternal. Amen. Amen. God is not going to let you starve to death spiritually. I want you to, God is not going to bring you this far and turn his back on you and leave you alone. That's not the God that I serve. You, you can spiritually starve yourself to death. You can. God will not starve you to death spiritually, but you can starve yourself to death and blame it on God if you want to. 
sitting in your pew, not coming to church and raising your hands, not getting involved in the service. Do that for a few years and see how, how hot you are in God's eyes. Lukewarm, hot, or cold. Amen? Remember that scripture? Amen. Lukewarm, he'll spew you out of his mouth. You stay and you just don't get into the services. And I've seen people come up here and sing their hearts out. And I'm up here worshiping God and, and, and just, whoo, the Spirit's moving. And I don't see how. Even when we come up and say, hey, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. I see people sitting there like this. I'm like, how in the world? You know, and, and the thought comes to my mind is, why are you here? What? Why? Why do you, why do I just stay in bed or get up and watch the news or something at home? You know, why, why come to church and, and not get involved? I don't, I, am I serious? In my mind, I don't understand that. Because I come to church for a whole different reason than to disrupt it and not get along in church and not raise my hands. I come to church to raise my hands to show surrenderance to the Savior. He's the one I'm serving. That's why I raise my hands to him. I, I, it, it, somebody explain it to me. I don't understand how you can come into a church house and drive to get here and fight the battle to get here, fight all week long to get some relief, and then come here and not do nothing. I, I, I'm not built that way. I, don't, I can't understand that. The Lord saved me from that. The Lord pulled me out of a wreck, wreck that I was in to help me along my way. I can't help but give him thanks and lift my hands and say, thank you for pulling me out of that mess I was in. I was in America. Everybody here came out of something. Amen. And, and some of us here are still going through stuff. Amen. But praise him in the good times. Praise him in the bad times. Worship him in his house. This is, this is his house. If you come to my house or if I come to your house, Sister Sarah, I'm going to acknowledge you. Thank you for letting me come over this weekend. I, you know, hey, thanks for this great meal. You know. But some people walk into God's house and won't say nothing to him. How can you do that? Walk into God's house. Woo! Hey, man, I'm hitting somebody, ain't I? Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Come on. Amen. Amen. This is God's house. This ain't, my, this ain't Brother Lloyd's house. This ain't Brother Howard. He, he built it. He helped build it. But he built it for God. He built this for the Savior. He built this as a temple to praise the Lord. To come in here and save yourself from this untoward generation. Amen. That's what this place is built for. It's not a couch to come in and sit at. It's not a place to just come in and, and take a nap or rest like that. It's a place of rest for your mind. But man, while we're here, we've got to take advantage of worshiping our Savior. He desires it. When you walk through those doors, he's like, oh, I hope they worship me today. Man, I could, I could really use to hear from Brother Mike this morning. He hasn't talked to me all week. Brother Mike, say something to me. You're in my house. Say something to me today, please. He's desiring me to worship him this morning. Lord, thank you for this, this rotten week I had. Anything. Speak to me. Say something to me. Amen. Ooh, boy, did I get off track. <laughs> Hallelujah. God's good. Amen. It's up to you. <laughs> Woo. It's up to you to lift your hands up and worship God. It's up to you. Nobody else is going to come by and go, come on, Jimmy, it's time to lift your hands. Come on, don't you feel that, Jimmy? Lift your hands up and worship God. Come on. He's been good to you, Jimmy. Nobody's going to walk around the church house and do that. It's up to you. If you feel like stepping out in the aisle and walking and, and lifting your hands up, that's up to you. I'm not going to tell anybody, hey, mom, it's time to step out and walk. Get off your organ and let's walk the aisle. Amen? No. 
You know God's touch when you feel it. You know what God's explaining you to do. You know that you know exactly what God's telling you to do in a church service. When the Spirit's moving and everything's, you know, everybody's clapping on one and three and things are going right and, man, everybody's all in one accord, we know how to act in a church house. We know how to act. Amen. We had a preacher come by here a few months ago and said, we have a reputation to uphold. When somebody comes into our church house, they come into this church for a reason. They go to a Methodist church or a Baptist church or wherever else because they don't want this. They don't want the excitement, the joy, the shouting, the screaming, the running the aisles, people falling out in the spirit. It confuses them because they don't know this book that well. But the children of God, the true worshipers, we know what's going on when he starts open, ripping off the building, the roof, and, and pouring his spirit. And we know what's going on. Amen. God sees your attitude. God sees our attitude. He sees your sign that you carry into a church house. He sees that. What a shame sometimes. Amen. What a shame. I'm, I'm guilty. I'm guilty. Some, some Friday nights, man, I've had a rough week, and, you know, I come in here, I still come up on the pulpit, and I'll, I'll raise my hands. I don't have a problem worshiping my Savior, even though I had a rough week and a bad day. Amen. He's still looking out for me. He's still the same God. Amen. Exactly. He will never change. Amen. 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 Do you carry a complaint? Do you carry a chip on your shoulder? Amen. Or do you have a or do you have a cry that I want more? I want more of you, Lord. I want more. I, I, what I got last week just wasn't enough, Lord. What I felt this morning at home praying, it's just not enough, Lord. When I come into your presence, I, I feel something. I just don't feel at home or at Walmart or at Martin's. <laughs> Lord, I feel that when I come into your house, you make me feel welcome there, Lord. <laughs> you make me feel like I'm somebody there, Lord. <laughs> you make me feel like I am your child, <laughs> which we are. That's the way we should feel when we walk in here. Amen. I feel like praising you when I come into your house, God. I feel like thanking you, Lord. I feel like stomping my feet. I feel like clapping my hands. Amen. Because you're worthy, Lord. Because you're worthy. I have a place right here, Lord. I have a place right here in my heart that, that only you can touch. Only you can get to this place, God. Amen. The devil knows to stay away from this place. He, he knows. He knows. This is, there's a spot reserved right here in my heart just for you, God. Just for you. You're the only one that can fill it. You're the only one that can make me feel the way I feel when you're in there, God. You're the only one. You're the only one. Ooh, hallelujah. When you get desperate enough, when you get hungry enough, spiritually now, spiritually Spiritually, some people in here are starving to death. Some people in here, if they were honest, if, you, if we were honest, and I said, stand up if you're hungry, we'd be amazed. We would. But yet, when the altar call is called, or when the singers fire it up and get going again, when I go to do good, evil's present. And I'm telling you, God uses people in the church house. The devil uses people in the church house. He does. He does. Read the Bible. He does. When I go to do good, evil is present. You should see the warfare going on right now spiritually above us. I'm telling you. Anybody else feel that tension? Amen. When I go to do good, evil's present. <laughs> but I'm telling you, my good is a lot better than that evil. My, my power, my power, the Holy Ghost, my power, Jesus Christ, my power source, Jesus Christ. 
You can't touch that, brother, sister. Amen. Try if you may. Try if you want to. I'm telling you, victory is on its way. Amen. Victory is ours. Victory is ours. You are the only one that can change the status on your sign. You are the only one that can change the status on your sign. And I'm asking you as a friend and as a preacher, don't, don't shrug me off today. Don't shrug me off. Don't let the devil use you for his good, for his evil. Do not come into the church house with, a, with an arrogant sign or with an arrogant attitude into, into God's house. God's house. Let your sign down this morning. I'm going to have the singers come back up. As, as Sister Dolores will say, take off the old robe and put on a new. Amen. Throw your old sign down and write something different on your sign this morning. Write something different on your sign this morning. I have been changed. My heavy burden has been lifted. My chains have been broken. I am a new creature. I have been forgiven. I have been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. I have been I have received the gift of the Holy Ghost. Woo! Amen. Change your sign this morning. Change your sign. I got a new life. I got a new start. I got a new chance to start over and turn my life around. Not too many people in this world get that opportunity, my friend. You got an opportunity this morning to turn some things around. Woo! To walk out of here a different way than you walked in here. Amen. Don't give up, my friend. This is not over by a long shot. Everybody stand, please. Woo! This is not over, my friend. It's not over until he says it's over. And while there's still opportunities, there's still chances, and there's still an altar to, to, to come to, and, and the signs are up here. Broken lives can be fixed here. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Do you need a new start this morning? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I'm praying for you this morning. I'm on your side. I'm on your side. If you come to church and you put forth an effort, I'm on your side, my friend. I'm on your side. He's on your side. I'd love to see somebody turn their life around the way my life was turned around. I went all in. When, I, when he, that opportunity came to me, and he said, I'll take that broken mess, that wreck of a life that you destroyed. I'll take it, and I'll cast it over here into the sin of unforgiveness. I'll cast it over to that field, and I'll never bring it up again to you. I jumped at it. I jumped at it, my friend. I jumped. Pick me. Pick me. Choose me. Man, I want that opportunity. Yes. Yes, yes, give me that, give me that opportunity. I want that, I want that. And then when Sister Julie testified last Friday, and she said, it's up to us, it's up to me. I'm the only one that's going to hold myself back. She said when she finally came up here, she wanted it again the following Sunday. I want to feel that again. I want to taste that again. That's the way we are when you, when you get it. You want it all over again. You want to taste it all over again. Amen. What an opportunity this morning, my friends. God, God is here this morning. He's here. He's been walking up and down these aisles ever since the service started. Touching hearts and touching minds, whispering in your ear, today's your day. Today's your opportunity. Today. Don't put it off. Don't put it off, man. I mean, it is powerful here today. Woo! Glory! Man. 
We got water in the baptism. We got water. We got God right here holding a gift that's been prepared for you called the Holy Ghost. And he's right here. Just wanting to hand it over. He just wants to hand it over to you. He just wants to hand it to you. It's yours. You don't have to beg for it. You don't have to, you don't have to beg. You come up here and ask and you shall receive. Oh boy. Holy Ghost is all over me today. Woo! Glory. Hallelujah. I'm going to go ahead and open up the altar. Man, come up here. Come up here and change your sign this morning. Change your life. Change your direction this morning. Make a change for the good this morning. Amen. God bless you. Thank you this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every prayer.